Hello there, how are you doing? Hope you are well. I had a lot of feedback from my video on NFTs last week, so thank you for that. It seems that they continue to blow up and that everyone is now getting very rich to the point that I'm considering actually making my own NFT. I mean, I said, should I NFT my record collection? People said, that's not a bad idea, Mr. Haswell. Why don't you give it a go? Have to admit, it is quite tempting. But that's not what I'm here to talk about this week. I want to talk about chips. In fact, the title of this video was a little bit of a clickbait chips video because, let's face it, who doesn't like chips? Uh, one of my big problems here in Hong Kong is it's very hard to get traditional chip shop chips, the kind you would get in the UK, which are very greasy, very salty, uh, and almost certainly will give you some sort of heart attack or coronary disease in later life. For some reason, they're horribly addictive, but you don't really get them here. We just get typical sort of French fries, the sort of things you might get in McDonald's or a fast food restaurant. Very occasionally you get good chips. No, but I'm not here to do a food review. It's not chips chips. I'm talking about microchips or more specifically, technology components, particularly semiconductors. I'm using chips as a very generic term, but really it's semiconductors I want to talk about. Now, you may not have noticed this. Uh, you have to read kind of fairly specialist press, although I think at some point it will make the mainstream press. But we are facing what is called a semiconductor shortage. Now, what is a semiconductor, I hear you ask? This is the bit of technology that links every piece, of, it basically links chips together, Actually, I'll go even more generic than that. It's essentially the things inside any piece of electronic equipment that make it work, that allow things to communicate with each other, that allow power to go between different bits. They are, think of it as the veins in your body connecting the various organs, and chips themselves will contain semiconductors as well. They're using chip fabrication, for example. So they're a big deal. You will find them in everything. It used to be that you'd find them in computers. People would talk about silicon chips. Uh, now. Let's be honest, you'd be hard pressed to find a consumer device or corporate device, or in some cases, industrial advice, a device that is not in some way using semiconductors. Now, you often find these things in, I suppose, the, for consumer device, the most obvious thing is the camera I'm filming this on, or your telephone, or your Apple TV, or whatever system you use, or, or whatever. You'll find them in that. But the problem is, when COVID hit, when we started the pandemic, a few things happened. First off, it wasn't necessarily easy for factories to continue to make them because there was a problem with getting people into factories. People were in lockdown in various parts of the world. Uh, it, was, it was challenging. I'm sure you all remember this. I'm sure some of you, depending where you are in the world and watching this, are still in lockdown. So that was issue number one. Issue number two was that when companies saw that we had essentially a global pandemic, people were not going to be able to work or go out or do the sort of things they used to do, uh, they predicted that they wouldn't be buying as much tech, there wouldn't be much as much of a demand of technological devices, of anything involving semiconductors and microchips. And so they, they lowered the number of the orders that they were placing. They sort of reduced their estimates how many they would need to sell or be able to sell. Uh, and of course, in response, the, co the factories producing semiconductors then essentially reduced their capacity. Now, as you're probably aware, having lived through a pandemic, if you're watching this uh, sort of recently after I filmed it, not sort of 50,000 years in the future, which would be un unusual. I wonder if YouTube and LinkedIn would still be going, but there we go. But if you're watching this and you've just been through the pandemic, you will probably be aware that you probably bought or your company bought or friends of yours bought more than one technological gadget, perhaps as a result of what happened in the pandemic. Now, I live in a place in Hong Kong called Wan Chai, uh, which is often famous for being quite a salubrious area. And yes, part of it is. But it also has a big computer center, which is kind of think of it as a mini mall for technology, where there are lots and lots of little tiny shops all selling computer goods. And I walk past that at least twice a day. It's on my way to the office. I also go in there a lot because I'm a massive nerd and buy loads of kit. Now, it was not unusual to watch people walking out with loads of often computer monitors. I think it was mainly to connect their, their work laptops to monitors, but also games consoles, laptops, computers, all sorts of electronic devices on a scale I had never seen before. It was an absolute boom. So people are buying more tech. That's just my sort of anecdotal evidence. But even if you look at sales on things like Amazon, which has done incredibly well during the pandemic, people were buying massive, massive amounts of technology, of gadgets, of things that contain semiconductors. So the problem we've got now is that people are buying more kit 
than the factories can produce the semiconductors to construct that kit. Now we expect that to go on until 2022. We are expecting a shortage in terms of technology. And this is going to be a problem because it will result in rising prices. It's already hard to get some kinds of technology. Now, if you are a computer gamer, and I am, massive nerd, let's be honest, vinyl records, computer games, I don't seem to like anything that is essentially that cool. Now, I like games consoles, and I was very excited about the PS5 and the Xbox Series 1 last year. Could I easily get an Xbox 5, Xbox Series 1 or PS5? No, I couldn't because there was limited production and because there was limited production, people were buying them up as quickly as they could because they knew they could sell them on for massive sums. Uh, I think the, the going rate was well over a thousand US dollars for a PS5 on launch. And sadly, it hasn't really died down. So that was a bit of a bit of a mess. As well as being a console gamer, I like computer games, and I was very excited about a game called Cyberpunk 2077, which I eventually got and enjoyed and played. And for that, I wanted a new graphics card. Now, NVIDIA and AMD, who are the two main graphics card producers, particularly for gaming systems, uh, they both released new cards over the course of the last 12 months. Uh, the, the 3080 for NVIDIA, and I can't remember the AMD one, 6800 XT, maybe? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, these were incredibly powerful, really sought after, and impossible to get. They would sell out within seconds. There was limited quantities of them in the first place, and people were buying them because they knew they could make a lot of money selling them on. So another shortage of tech, and it's driven the prices up. Now, the reason I'm talking about nerdy stuff like graphics cards is, is what I can see driving up the prices in t of tech in general. As it becomes harder to produce stuff because we haven't got the raw materials, we can't have the semiconductors to produce the equipment, then you'll find things become scarcer and become expensive. And to be honest, post-pandemic, where lots of people lost their jobs and people are thinking, is there a way for me to make money easily? One way to make money is to buy a kit that might be hard to get hold of, buy it on a credit card, then sell it on the secondary market and make a profit. To be honest, that's called scalping. Fine, I can see why people do it. I don't like it, but I can see why people do it. So that's an issue too. So we've got Daunt, it's sort of the next, think of it as we had the, the COVID pandemic where everyone was essentially wasn't able to go out or was sick or dying and all horrible things happened. We are now going to see a second wave of a technology shortage. And you might think, well, as well, who cares? 2022, all the factories will be back up to speed. We won't have the same problems. And that hopefully is true. But there, behind this, there is a fact that only certain places actually have the capability to produce semiconductors or indeed have access to the rare earth materials required to produce a lot of the kit that we consume all, all the time. Most notably things like monitors and TVs which use all sorts of rare earth minerals uh, and most of the production of that is controlled by China. Now you'll be aware if you watched any of my videos last year or if you've read any newspaper or you've turned on the news or you haven't been living under a rock which I very much doubt you have been that we are still in the little bit a little bit of a technology war there is a lot of geopolitical rivalry. I get scared. Now, you may think I'm a bit of a fool, but I grew up in the 80s, and for a significant portion of the 80s, mainly after watching a TV series called Threads, which really I shouldn't have been allowed to watch at that age, I was terrified that there was about to be a nuclear war and we were all going to die. Uh, not quite that scared now, but you have to admit it's a bit of a scary situation. It's easy to imagine that supplies of some of the components required to build technology devices would be constrained because of either faltering geopolitical relations uh, or, heaven forbid, that somewhere, somewhere a war kicks off and we can't get access to things we need. Uh, let's just hope that isn't the case. But that's a problem too. So we have an issue. Our entire world now runs on technology. Uh, technology has become cheap. It's become in many ways disposable. Uh, it's not uncommon if you're wandering a certain place to find people who may or may not have much money, but they will still have a mobile phone. They still have access to tech, and you need tech to survive. A lot of these sort of pandemic uh, COVID scanners that you use where you have to fill in where you've been, sort of be home safe, uh, I think is the one we have here in Hong Kong, sort of location tracking app. If you haven't got a mobile phone, you can't use it. And there are ways around that, but they're quite cumbersome. So we all need technology. But what if technology suddenly becomes a difficult to source component? Prices will go up. It will make it very difficult for companies who are not operating in tech with a lot of money to essentially keep up. 
And I'm going to think we're going to see once again this divide where technology companies who have access, easier access to kit, pull ahead, and those who don't languish behind. Now, what do I suggest to solve that? I don't have any ideas, really. I can't say that, well, we just suddenly have to produce more, more technology equipment or, or, I suppose, diversify where we produce semiconductors and microchips. Uh, we do. I think that's something that has to happen. But in the meantime, I think if you are working in an organization where you rely so heavily on technology, you have to factor in that things may be more difficult to acquire, that perhaps if, for example, you suddenly have to do a big technology refresh, it might be more expensive than you ever anticipated. And I can see this being a problem. We'll have to see. I mean, I, you can think of a sort of the great tech shortage of 2021, 2022 dawning on us. And then that leads to ever more, I suppose, edgy, edgy global affairs. I can see that being an issue, but who knows? But at the moment, if you're thinking of buying some fancy new gadget, wonder whether you'll be able to afford it in the future if it suddenly goes up in price and wonder how many of them will actually be made. And lastly, if you're a scalper and buying this stuff to, to basically mean that I can't afford a brand new games console, I don't like you. Anyway, on that positive note, I might go and get some chips, the eating variety, seeing that I feel like I've missed them over the past few months. Uh, if anyone knows anywhere I can get proper chip shop chips in Hong Kong, let me know. And if you've got any comments on the potential shortage of technology chips, chips, semiconductors and the impact that will have on technology, I'd be interested to hear from you. In the meantime, have a good one and take care. Bye-bye.